Hey folks, everybody hear me okay? Okay, well, we might as well go ahead and get started. Um, we have a recent viewer update. Uh, I think the current one out there now is Mate W that's gone out within the last week. Um, so uh, hopefully things are working well with that. It looks like this um, this update has gotten our crash rate down to at least close to where we try to keep it. Um, we'd had it a bit under 10% at one point. I think we're running about 11 with the latest one. So, uh, you know, it would be nice if it was lower, but at least it's a bit of a reduction from where we've been for uh, uh, for a few months now. Um, other than that, uh, we've got a bunch of ongoing work with the uh, graphics. Uh, the next release we'll be seeing from the uh, graphics side of the house will be the featurettes viewer, which um, will include some uh, some new, excuse me, which will include some new features, including um, uh, terrain, uh, PBR terrain, uh, mirrors, and uh, possibly increased texture limits. I think we're still evaluating some issues with that one. Um, I'll, I'll let the uh, folks from the graphics uh, side of the house talk about that in just a minute. Uh, other things we have going on, uh, still in the early stages on looking at Lua integration in the viewer, um, but at some point there will be a, a test viewer for that. Uh, it is not quite at the stage where it's where there's a lot to test yet. The, uh, the WebRTC viewer is coming along well. That is going to go out as a project viewer before too much longer, so that will give people a chance to uh, test drive it and uh, hope to get to a stage where it's, you know, the changes are actually ready to integrate into, into other viewers. Obviously, we want to work with the TPVs to make sure that the uh, web changes have been pulled in before we throw the switch because when we do, it'll everything will be uh, will be running voice uh, through WebRTC instead of uh, Vivox, and that will affect uh, basically everybody out there. Uh, other things, uh, I think those are the big ones. We've got uh, various mates in progress. Um, I should mention that the next mate we have brewing, mate X, is going to have the white space standardization. Um, we've been uh, talking for a while about trying to to uh, standardize that, uh, and and we will also document the process. So if people want to, you know, merge with white space ignored, there's ways to do that. If they would prefer to uh, maintain some other standard, they can do that as well, but um, at, at least for our own viewer, we'll be trying to maintain a, a certain uh, certain standard and make sure that we're, that we're keeping things uh, consistent going forward. Uh, let's see, I think those are probably the big things. Uh, who do we have from uh, graphics land? Uh, uh, Cosmic, do you want to talk a bit about the featurettes work? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, let's see, uh, for, uh, for the, uh, featurettes viewer, um, Dave P just put out a, uh, new, brand new testing purposes only client side GLTF importer, um, that allows for importing and viewing static GLTF meshes and seeing how they look in world. Um, this is, uh, uh, part of, uh, phase two of the GLTF project, um, uh, and, uh, as for the other featurettes, your features, which have been discussed previously, um, I am in bug fixing mode for PBR terrain, uh, Geens is wrapping up mirrors, um, and, um, uh, 2K, uh, Textures is um, pending. I think 
pricing is uh, a consideration uh, before we uh, we actually release that. So we want to make sure we get that right. Um, and that's it on the graphics side. Um, Ryder, do you have anything to add? Well, we are hoping to get uh, materials to pre-flight next week. So uh, uh, that will certainly include uh, PBR terrain and mirrors. Um, we may have 2K textures disabled depending on uh, uh, depending on how that status uh, uh, goes. Okay, uh, I think that about covers uh, our announcements. Any uh, questions or other topics that uh, folks would like to cover while you're here? Question about teleport and region crossing impact. Is there a difference between an avatar with one attachment with 10 linked parts versus 10 attachments with one part each? Uh, that's an interesting one. My initial guess would be that it's going to come out pretty close, but uh, uh, writer says yes, there's a difference. There will be differences in in how that's uh, how that's packed and, and transmitted, but uh, in what context are you are you wondering? I, I it should be, be about sort of performance impact. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there'd be there'd be some performance impact. Um, Ah, um, it's hard to say. That's that's more of a question. You know, there there will be there are uh, if you come to the uh, slug on Tuesdays, uh, that would certainly be the place to get that question answered. If you don't have the link for it, I'll I'll find the links and stuff, but it's uh, noon on Tuesdays. Oh, that reminds me of another topic. Uh, we've had requests in uh, in Canny, you know, the feedback portal for uh, either meetings that occur during other times of day or changing you know, either, either having just a wider range of times or having, uh, you know, potentially changing sometimes. Uh, I think the main goal is to make things more accessible to folks in Europe. Um, curious if there are any thoughts here. I, I realize you uh, just polling the people who show up at a meeting, you're, you're getting the people who can, can make the time work at least somewhat, but um, still it's, uh, I'd, I'd be curious what, uh, what your thoughts are? Do you do you feel like this this time is working pretty well? Um, uh, thoughts on on uh, you know potential changes or or trying to you know cast the net a bit wider.
I think we've uh, also gotten some questions about timing from people who are, you know, feel like they can't make meetings during the day because it's, you know, uh, working hours for them. So I guess that would be another another potential uh, potential concern. Yeah, you know, we do have a bit of a range of times because we're spread out across three time zones. Um, there's a there's the open source meeting uh, on uh, on some Wednesdays, which is pretty early. That's uh, I think seven a.m. Pacific, which is you know at least working hours for people on the East Coast, but uh, would allow people to get there before work in some cases if they're on the west um but in practice it's not very it's not very well attended mostly mostly the people who come are from uh from points even farther east you know europe and asia Well, thank, thanks for letting us know, uh, Horley. That's very sad news, and uh, it's it's especially especially uh, uh, you know because of uh, at such a young age. Uh, that's uh, that's that's a real that's a real blow to the community and and uh, and everyone who knew them. Agenda page. Uh huh. Good question. I have not looked at the agenda page in a long time myself. Do you even have a link for that? Right now we have uh, we have kind of an internal 
document that we use, but we don't have something that something public that actually gets looked at. So it, it probably would be a good idea to have a way for people to submit questions in advance. I think we've had the problem on uh, on the wiki for a long time that we couldn't make it uh, publicly accessible because of a few on a bad or you know publicly modifiable because of a few bad actors. So I'm not sure if it's currently publicly editable or not. See the last update was was when we went to Python three, so yeah, that's uh, that's been a bit. Yeah, I guess I'm not sure if people in general can add questions or, or topics there or if it has to be folks who are already uh, given additional permissions in the wiki. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, if, if anybody's interested in using it, uh, go ahead and try to add topics for our next meeting and I will try to remember to look at it before the next meeting. Um, if you have any issues getting to it, uh, let us know about that too and we'll try to come up with a better solution. E support tick. Okay. Yeah. So that doesn't depend on Jira, which is good. Yeah, just to confirm what were they saying in text, a support ticket with a request for edit access to the wiki is just fine. Okay, that sounds good. Let's see, there are a couple of topics that, uh, uh, folks have, have flagged internally that I wanted to bring up um, for the meeting. One is about feature flags, where for for the featurettes branch and for other projects going forward, we're planning to use feature flags as a way of specifying, um, you know, which things we we want to be currently active. So if uh, and, and the flags come from the simulator, so the simulator says, hey, you know, we're on board with 2K textures, or or doesn't say that if it isn't. And then you, you get different conditional behavior in the viewer based on those flags accordingly. Uh, so that it it's, it it's a useful mechanism for allowing us to have code that, um, you know, have code in the viewer that, uh, is still in development and then just have it uh, behind a, a feature flag and don't turn the feature on so it shouldn't affect anything. Uh, but it does complicate the process of making sure that, uh, it, you know, everything works because at some point the flag does get flipped on. Um, so it's if people are pulling from a branch that has that kind of a strategy, uh, it's they, they they kind of need to be aware that that uh, the the code that's on, that's behind the feature flag that's currently disabled will at some point get turned on and then the the behavior of the viewer uh, will 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 be modified accordingly. Um, so 
you know, for internal testing or just the development process, that's that's something to be aware of. And uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll try to keep people in the loop as as new things as new uh, new flags get get flipped. But uh, it's it's uh, important to be aware of that. Yeah, the that that was sort of the old way to do feature flags. Um, that's what we did for like Animesh. Uh, the like if a viewer if viewer had Animesh support, it would request a fake cap for maybe or maybe even a real cap related to Animesh. And uh, if it didn't know anything about it, it, wouldn't request the cap. And then we would use that to determine whether it was okay to send uh, the Animesh related messages to to that viewer. Um, so the the new way to do it is to actually use the simulator features um, uh, data blob to list to list feature flags. I, I think there's some advantages on that just from a process standpoint. It's easier to see things all grouped together and it's easier to understand the intent, whereas the the uh, the cap based method was kind of indirect and it wasn't particularly clear what was going on. Um, so I think that that's the plan is to go with that going forward. But the, in terms of what, what it buys you, it's basically the same thing. It's just, it's just two different ways of conveying the same kind of information. Not making UDP formats change based on flags. Uh, give me an example where we're doing that, if you remember. Okay, that's that's fine. No rush, but um, yeah, I I will uh, I'll make sure that that gets passed along. It does seem like uh, changing message formats is is uh, always potentially dicey. Let's see, looking back in the scroll back, speculation that the spammers may have given up. Well, they, it's, I don't know. It seems like the new ones have a way of showing up. Let's see. Uh, oh, so, so the other um, the other question that got raised uh, internally was about GUI toolkits. Um, of course, uh, currently we're using Zui to specify everything for the UI, which uh, you know it works, but it's uh, certainly certainly not cutting edge at this point. Um, if we were looking to support something else uh, at some point, and we don't have any immediate plans to do this, it's it's just more more in the speculation column. Uh, what uh, what other toolkits would folks potentially be interested in?
I haven't looked at QT in many years. Do you, does anybody know if there is a standard, uh, you know, kind of uh, text serialization format that it supports? I know, like, what would the equivalent of of Zui be if we were um, if we were using QT, or would we have to roll our own for that? I think that the, uh, to answer your question, Kitty, I think the idea is not to try and overhaul everything, uh, but be able to introduce something um, to to provide more options. I I think there's two uh, two u primary use case. One is for end user UI, and the other use case is uh, for developer UI uh, for easier debug tools and stuff. I think uh, Lua scripting also came up came up as a uh, potential rationale for uh, a new UI system. Oh, I, also, I see Roxy's here. I, I think I missed her earlier when we were doing the WebRTC update. Um, I, I, anything else you want to say about that? I'm not sure what you said before, but uh, I am cooking up a project viewer now. Um, so that should be out for people to play with. And, of course, uh, the same old uh, branches up there for WebRTC for those of you doing ports. Um, we've had some success uh, some of some of y'all have had some success with Linux, which is which is nice, and I'm pretty sure we're closing in on on feature things. So uh, we're we're down to like finding and fixing bugs. So uh, the code should stabilize a little bit. Um, I am open to any communication on on this stuff, so I can help. Um, just, uh, I'm, I'm in the SLT, or I'm in the, uh, the, uh, email list, the, uh, email group. That's it. Oh yeah, yeah. I did put a uh, something called the Echo Pylon um, on the WebRTC regions, WebRTC one, which you can go up and talk to, and it'll echo, echo your voice back. So that uh, 
should help, but uh, doing conference chat and group chat is a little bit uh, difficult, um, unless you have a couple of computers or a couple of friends. So I am, I am all in favor of pylons, and we can schedule something. Yeah, maybe once we have a project viewer out, we can uh, pre-announce a pylon and encourage uh, folks to to uh, kind of all gang up on it. Yeah, um, we are talking about getting a region or, or so up on main grid as well, so people can play with it there. Rock, did you have any guess when we might have a uh, have a project viewer build that we could uh, kind of shepherd on its way? Yeah, well, theoretically, I launched the build about fifteen minutes ago, so in an hour or so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Maybe a little bit longer if everything goes smoothly. Yeah, I, to be clear, there are other phases involving QA, but uh, uh, having yeah. a build would be a great start. Thanks. Yeah, and the uh, the pre project build is is being hammered on by a bunch of our QA people right now. So I am optimistic. All right, any other questions, topics, speculations? Anybody see the eclipse? Yeah, the cloud cover, I think it was a tough one this time. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Joe. Um, <sighs> Yeah, I think normally our process is to add new optional blocks onto uh, onto messages rather than just additional data. So I'm not sure uh, what the what the uh, you know choice choice was was there. Um, 
Right. Do you know anything about the the message wrangling on on the server side for the appearance message? Uh, there was some data added recently. Um, <clears throat> I think it was an extra byte for uh, to help support mobile, which gave the number of of attachments that were expected. Uh, nothing else is coming to mind, though. Okay, uh, Joe. The what, what I meant with the optional block is is that it shouldn't um, it shouldn't cause problems for a viewer that doesn't know about the block because it's not going to ask for the block either. Um, like. Well, if it's if it's expecting a fixed length, yeah, but it shouldn't that be handled like kind of block by block rather than just just have assuming that it's always a fixed length for the whole thing. Optional blocks shouldn't be causing you any trouble. They, they shouldn't be causing a length there, should they? Um, so that that's why I was wondering if one of the one of the changes was was not done that way, um, but. Uh, uh, no. I'm not positive. That's that's certainly possible, but yeah, adding an extra add, adding an extra optional block to the uh, uh, to the message. If if the viewer gets you know, the viewer should get the block and then uh, uh, or or should get the should get the message and then just uh, stuff it doesn't know how to parse just tacks on the end. Yeah, I know we've used the optional oh. blocks before, and it's just, um, you know, older viewers yeah. have just ignored them. They haven't. Uh... Yeah, I mean, the, the, the trick with it should be in the template is that it's in the template on the, on the simulator, um, but the viewer, may not have been, the viewer may not have been updated yet. So, you know, if you're using a viewer that, that was built prior to that optional block being created uh, then yeah there will be extra there will be extra opaque bytes at the end of the message New template rejects old messages. Okay, I, I'm not sure what the template change was, but that sounds kind of odd. Um, I can I can pass that along. I, I can do some I can do some digging on my end. Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah, I remember there was some optional block thing for either Bento or Animesh, but I didn't think it had caused any any uh, trauma at the time. So that's, uh, I'm wondering if there's something different about the mechanism here. Or maybe nobody was doing a Rust viewer at the time. Uh, yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. Uh, for, for blocks, yes. Uh, no, uh, variable, hold on, I happen to have a template open at the moment. Uh, no, it's just, uh, the variable keyword on, uh, it's just the variable keyword 
on the on the block on the uh, block definition. Variable one it means that it is a it is a block of binary data with one byte to indicate the size. Variable two is two bytes to indicate the size, etc. Oh, interesting. Okay, this is why we want to have uh, server folks at the meetings. Yes, yes. A, uh, there's probably a byte that indicates the number of uh, number of times it repeats. Yes. Well, it, it should get to the end of the known part of the message and then say there's ex, there's extra data. We can only add variable blocks at the at the end of we can only add variable blocks at the end of a uh, of a message. Yeah, we don't do that, I think. Yeah, don't do that. That's not always the best way to approach the problem. Uh, you know, for instance, with with uh, re, uh, you can actually expect a new uh, with combat two, you can expect a new uh, variable block at the end of uh, region at the at the end of the region info message. Um, You know, we, we don't want to have, we, we, you know, as, as, you know, if we, if we, every, if every time we, for instance, add some avatar feature that does not fit into the current, uh, that does not translate into the current uh, uh, avatar appearance message, um, 
or some new region features. Well, let's stick with avatars uh, because that's most likely to change um, and and to be sent frequently. Right. All all of a sudden, we've got uh, two messages that have to be sent, or or three if we add a feature after that, or four if we add a feature after that, as opposed to a single message. Because if we just switch to using a new message number, then the uh, old viewers won't be able to uh, won't be able to support uh, support it. Right. How does adding a new optional block break backwards compatibility for old viewers if if we do it that way? Oh, only if they're only if they're expecting multiple messages per packet. All right, turn that off. Oh, I mean that's the other downside of our of our message format is we can't remove things that are that that are abs obsolete. Isn't that the point of variable? That's, that that's what variable block means. Do we not send a? Uh, do we not send data as to how large the uh, the entire message is? Well, heck, hindsight.
we can certainly try to get that uh, done a little better. Although, I, like I said, I cannot promise you that I cannot promise you that we will not continue adding um, variable blocks at the end of existing messages. Um, and so, if you're so if you're you know those the changes to to the template will trickle out through uh, will will trickle out through the viewer. Uh, the, the viewer that supports those those new blocks. Uh, let's see, we have a question about uh, legacy material has a fully transparent texture and a blank specular map. Should it be shiny on PBR viewer? Um, don't know. Uh, Cosmic, any idea on that one? Let me take a moment to parse that. Fully transparent texture. Are you talking about the the texture for color? I'm going to assume that the case is yes. And a blank specular map. Oh gosh, you know, I don't know enough about um, Lin Fong to say for certain. However, um, I do recall that there was a change to uh, PBR alpha materials. It used to be that um, that if there was a transplant transparent parent PBR material uh, PBR base color, and then the if the blend mode was set to blend. Uh, that there would be like a shiny glass effect. Um, however, it turns out there's already a GLTF extension that determines that behavior. So um, part of that feature got uh, walked back. Um, and in particular, the, uh, the GLTF uh, material extensions uh, that we have our eye on, eyes on in the near future are um, Index of refraction, uh, transmission, and volume. Is the is the third one. However, for Blin Fong, I think that behavior is kind of undefined. Um, so, I don't know. But whatever it is, we're not likely to change it now. Nothing to see here. Move along. All right. Well, we're about at time. Thanks for coming by, everybody. And we will be talking to you next time. Thank you, everyone.